Soul Soul, hello, and Lavis. Welcome to another episode of the Pain Family Ultimate Decades Challenge. This episode, we're going to have three births. I'm almost 100% sure of it, but like I mentioned last time, I've kind of gotten lost with all of the pregnancies, so probably three births, but we'll see. Also, I forgot to mention that I put the house risk rolls and tuberculosis spread rate slash, you know, fatality rate in the amended rules document and the life and death section if you are looking for those for your own game. And I kind of feel like the other diseases will get added as they come up naturally in our playthrough since, in case you couldn't tell, I basically tend to cover my bases with more research when we get to new things. So that's kind of the plan for now. Um, and finally, okay, Knox actually likes gardening now, which I was hoping we could trick him into. So excellent news. He's out here just taking care of the plants, hopefully, uh, making sure that everything's going well. And technically today is our harvest day, but um, since we just harvested before we moved here, I'm not going to participate in that um, because, excuse me, you're supposed to be playing with your sibling. In fact, now that Harper's back, you can play together. Yeah, because we just harvested the other day, um, so it's not so important to me that we harvest again. Oh yeah, our gruel that everyone was so depressed by last time that we were here. For me, it's been a few days since I last recorded, um, but I haven't yet seen everybody's comments. So uh, if I've forgotten some things, then I apologize, but that's just the way it goes sometimes, you know what I mean? Uh, buddy, I thought I gave you a job to do. Oh, that's right. It is also our hunting day, but so here's the thing at our new location, because we are now freed people and we are now peasants rather than being serfs. We actually have different rules than we did originally. Can you please use elbow grease? Because I'm actually about to send you and your son out hunting. Today we do have one birthday. It's kind of an important one, but we'll get to that when it happens and hopefully everything goes well. But today we're going to go hunting uh, because tomorrow is going to be really busy. And so it's just going to work out better for us if we go ahead and go hunting today. Uh, when there are less things to deal with. Actually, can you go and gather some water for me if you don't mind? Thank you, thank you. So at this level, once we're freed people and we're peasants, we don't get to go hunting for free. Our Earl no longer provides that opportunity for us. So what we can do is we can either pay a hundred simoleons to go hunting since nobles own the forests. And so we can imagine that we're having to pay for that opportunity. So that would cost us 200 simoleons because we're sending two sims to go. Or we can take a risk and roll a d10 in which case, why are you so angry? Oh, well, listen, we all lose sometimes, buddy. Or we can take a risk and both of them would have to roll a d10 where if they roll a seven, then they are imprisoned for two some days. And if they roll an eight, then they're immediately executed because crime was punished pretty severely at this point in time, since it was really difficult for the authorities to catch criminals. So they would often um, make an example out of them, shall we say. So I think that we're going to go ahead and like roll a d10 just to see what is it like. I don't know how the odds are. I've actually never gotten the opportunity to have somebody risk it, you know. Um, but I don't think if somebody is up for execution, I don't think I'm going to stick with that. I just want to see what would it look like and what are the odds, you know, of that actually happening instead of just going for it. I want to see how bad it would be for real. What are you guys doing? Just standing That's out here? So well, uh, why do you guys have such a bad relationship? Well, oh, whatever. You can play with your two brothers. And I'll toss that out for you, buddy. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and roll a d8 just to see what would happen. Or sorry, a d10 just to see what would happen. Um, because I'm curious about 
how it would look. So while Heidi's washing these clothes and we've got a great view of this beautiful waterfall, <laughs> why don't we roll a D10 and see what would happen if we were to go with the D10 rule and not pay. The first one obviously wouldn't count. So for Esmond first, number two, he'd be fine. And for Knox, he would get a five and he would be fine. So maybe the odds aren't so bad. You let me know what you think, because I mean, that is still um, a 10% chance of just being immediately executed. But I guess if you're gonna go out stealing from people, maybe that's just what you get at this time in history, I don't know. Oh, Graham and Harper are jokesters. Good for you guys. You don't look like you're jokesters, but good for you for being jokesters. Now, if you can hear noise in the background, um, sorry, there's a lot of people on the street. There's also some construction going on. So my apologies for any interference that might happen in the background. But you know, these things happen. Esmond, buddy, somebody, it was Selby's father who passed away and so Esmond's so upset by it why don't you go ahead and practice my friend and Heidi I would really like for you to make a nice meal to celebrate us being oh yeah we don't have any of that okay then I'd really like for you to make a nice pantry foods of uh oh yeah we don't have that either well cheese meat and bread will do just fine this kid is so miserable. Just yank out that tooth, man. Just yank it out. Now, another thing that's interesting, or I think it's interesting about this time period, is that, of course, like I've mentioned before, streams were owned by the noble class as well as the forests, but it's been a long time since we've talked about that. But basically, the reason why we um, didn't really have to go fishing on our last lot was because we had our little pond on our own holding and so that was considered ours but for most people that if you wanted to go fishing you would have to get the earl's permission or whoever owned the land that you were on or you could pay for the opportunity to go fishing and oftentimes the nobility would allow that to happen because the nobility preferred meat to fish so they were like, yeah, it's fine. You can go fishing, except for there were a couple of fish that were considered not allowed for <laughs> the lower classes to have, but that's a whole other thing. However, living by the sea meant you didn't have to pay for the honor because seas and oceans were um, open to everyone. So you didn't have to pay and you also didn't have to get permission. You were just allowed to fish at the sea if you were out there or living on that. So a lot of poor people, peasant people, surf people did go fishing if they could. And salting fish was really common for preservation, which is why these guys are out here fishing because we don't have that much food as we all know. And so they're out here fishing to try and support the family. <laughs> Thank goodness for them. Ah, these little kids. So cute. Oh, hey, Dovile. That's like a long way to go. But okie dokie. Are you eating? Oh, excellent. Okay, everyone, you can go ahead and run back up here. I think we've caught a few fish today. And so you can come back up here and get something to eat for yourselves. Okay, Harper, you didn't get anything, but that's okay. You're the youngest, so maybe it's fine. Oh, no. Esmond was mauled? Dang. Also, today is Esmond's birthday. It's kind of a big deal. Um, so, hey, Dovile, thanks for popping by. It's a long way to go, but we appreciate that you've come over just to celebrate with us, I guess. Um, and so, I can't believe he's already up. I think it's his adult role. I don't think it's his young adult role. It's his adult role, which is crazy, but I guess he's got a teenage son now, so guess that kind of makes sense. Oh my gosh, you look so miserable. <laughs> oh, Esmond. You poor guy. Do you think he's feeling the pressure about his son becoming the next, the next guy? You know, I don't know. I don't know how he feels. All I know, well, I do. I know that he feels uncomfortable because he was mauled by a bear, but that's as far as I know about what's happening. Heidi, what are we doing over here? Heidi, why don't you go to the bathroom? You've got to go. And yeah, Dovile, you help yourself. Poor Esmond. 
Oh, Graham has a good reputation. Great job, dude. Does Anox have a great reputation? I don't think so. He's got a neutral reputation. Graham seems like he's really trying hard to become heir, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. What are you doing? Why do you say hi to your aunt? You don't even know Davile? That's nuts. <gasps> Night is falling. <gasps> okay, one pregnancy is happening, so we will go and check in on Oshara, see what's up, and then come back to Esmond for his adult birthday. So I'll see you when we get to Lithuania. Okay, here we are in Lithuania where Oshara is in labor. She's marching up to that little baby bassinet. Um, Yelu and Vilkas are still not doing very well, but they're Sims and won't stay in bed. So, I mean, they're marching around feeling uncomfortable, not doing very well. But this is not about them right now. Right now, this is about our good buddy Oshara. So go, Oshara, go, go, go. Oh my goodness, that was fast. Okay, so it's another another girl baby. Has she only had girl babies? Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, since Oshara and Yelu gave a Lithuanian name to their first daughter, who's survived, Vitalia, I've gone with a Mongolian name, according to the internet. You know, it's kind of hard to know all the time when you're looking at only English sources, but I saw the name Anu means peace, and I thought that was, uh, first of all, something that I felt relatively confident that I could say accurately, and also peace is just a really nice name. Oh! Oh, a boy, baby. Okay, um... Twins. Shoot. Okay, so we have a boy, uh, twins, and partly because I just spent about three minutes looking for a boy name that I thought I could pronounce, but also from a relatively reliable source and couldn't come up with one, and also partly because Yalu's in a bad way, uh, we're gonna name this baby after his father and give him the name Yalu as well. Okay, twins. Oh my gosh, look at this line of babies. I assume that's Anu. Where's bit little Yelu? Oh my goodness. It's just baby, baby, baby. Well, Dane is about to age up to an infant, and that'll really help the whole situation. You know, having uh, two infants and two babies. Well, I guess... Oh dear. Okay, is that Dana who's fussing? Uh, yipes. Okay. Oh gosh. It's all babies all the way here. Okay, so for, ignore the screaming in the background. For baby Anu, is she going to make it? She cannot roll the numbers 1, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 17, or 20. First one doesn't count, so no. <laughs> for Yelu the second, is he going to make it? <laughs> oh God. Okay, so bad news once again at the Narva household. Um, neither baby is making it, apparently, because that's the life that we live. You know, it's just, they just have had such bad luck. Oh my gosh. I'm not really sure how the Narvas had such terrible luck. I'm not really sure why. Uh, but this is rotten. Okay, we are back at the pains for Esmond's birthday. Um, hopefully he's not about to, he's doing it the wrong way, <laughs> of course. Well, thanks for the co comic relief, buddy. Okay, Esmond, happy birthday. Please let this go well. Oh, thanks for cheering your dad on, guys. Go, Esmond, go! Where are you- where are you going? Are you outside? Yes. How is that toilet broken again? 
He's aged up to adulthood. Congrats, my dude. For Esmond to survive his adult age up, he cannot roll the numbers 3, 6, 11, 13, or 18. That's all. First one doesn't count. <sighs> Esmond's fine. He's fine. He made it through his birthday. Everything's fine. All right, so I took a break from recording. I kind of despair quit after getting the first day done um, because the whole Vilkas thing happened for me right when we were at Oshara's and she'd lost the twins, um, which is why I was a bit down when we got back to the main family. But I decided not to include that in that section because I kind of wanted to sort of have a little memoriam for Vilkas's life. So <clears throat> I hadn't really decided yet how I was going to deal with the losses of our big characters like Vilkas who have been with us for so long. Um, and I'm not sure that I'm happy with that still, but it's what I did for this time. So if you have another suggestion for how we could memorialize or say goodbye to these big characters, let me know and we'll approach it that way. Um, in the spirit of honesty, we did plead for Vilkas uh, unsuccessfully. It just didn't make it into the editing. And um, he did sadly only roll for one more year past that age up. And his cause of death was also chosen by a wheel. So here we are on a new day for me and for The Sims. It's the last day of 1334, and honestly, I don't know that it's going to get very much better uh, because we've got four birthdays and two births today, and I already started recording this episode but had ran into some trouble because there's construction going on in the apartment above me. So... Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully we don't run into construction again, but we'll see. So we're here with Isabel. She's in, uh, Isabel. We're here with Eleanor. She's in labor. And my game's running just a bit laggy. And I'm sorry because it's really frustrating. But like I say, we've got some construction in the apartment above and it is very loud. So... I'm taking this opportunity to try and finish this year so that it could come out today. Oh my gosh, already, Eleanor? That was so fast. And it's a boy. Aw, oh, cute. Okay. Let's go with the name Edmund. It means wealth and fortune, and it's an old English name, according to Read Z Medieval Names Generator. And another one a twin. Okay. Um, I think maybe the name that I'm going to go with is Osmond. It means God and it's a very medieval name. So Edmund and Osmond, I think that's okay. Yeah. Thank goodness it's only two. Aww. Hey, congrats, Eleanor and new baby. I'm hoping the lag is going to sort itself out in just a moment. Sometimes it does that. Um, hopefully, hopefully. So there we go. We've got two new babies. Hopefully we've got two new babies. Although, to be honest, I'm like very paranoid after what happened with Oshara. That something might, 
you know, go wrong. Did that fix the leg? I can't tell. So first one doesn't count for Eleanor. This is her first child, but her mother Gree is here. So she just has to avoid rolling the numbers 1 and 11 and 15 because of having twins. And she has to roll twice. So hopefully everything goes well. First one doesn't count. So first one, she's fine. She's fine. And the second baby. Oh, also fine. That was really close, but she's fine. Okay. And then the babies have to avoid rolling the numbers 1, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 17, or 20. So for baby number one... Oh, he's safe. Okay. Now, in my opinion, Lenora really didn't need to have twins. Uh, she's got 11 baby tries, which is a lot, but I guess she said she is her mother's daughter, little mini Gree, and she said, you know what? <clears throat> twins it is. Twins it is. I'm sorry, Eleanor, but you're gonna have to suck it up, bud. Oh, with Kennard in the background. And baby number two. Trumpy Massa. Also oh, safe. Oh my gosh. Everyone, let's just say a big thank you to Lady Luck for giving us these two babies. And I think we're going to go ahead and leave these guys here. The Jacobsons, I think, are going to stay and be back at their own home at the start of 1335. As if they've, you know, stayed to help Eleanor and Edward get used to having these babies and then left for home. And so I will see you at the next house for the next birthday today. Don't worry, Eleanor, you'll get the hang of it, especially with your mom helping out. <laughs> so see you when we get to the next house. All right, and here we are at Darius and Isabel's home because today is Isabel's young adult birthday. So hopefully this is gonna go well uh, and everything goes nicely. That's the goal. For now, she's just sweeping because this place, this place kind of became a wreck at some point. I'm not really sure. Well, I mean, we haven't been here for a while, so I guess it makes sense. But they're still, they're still taking care of Yoris and Johanna, looking after them, loving them. Although Darius does <laughs> look very happy about it. <laughs> But, you know, oh, there we go. That's much better, isn't it? You can put that in your inventory to throw away later if you don't mind. Go ahead and, you know, potty train this kid. She doesn't need to have stinky diapers all the time. Time is just going so quickly right now. These couple of years are really wild. <clears throat> I was looking and there were 18 birthdays this year, which is a really wild number of birthdays. Oh, but I like to be able to see it. What about here? Can you make a wish here? No. Here? No. Happy birthday, Isabel. Happy birthday. Wee! Up she goes, and she's aged up to be... That doesn't work. Mean? I don't see that for her. Sure, a dog lover, why not? There we go, you can make some rabbit pie. And uh, we'll see how your rolls go. Are you gonna be successful or, or not? For Isabel to age up successfully, she just has to avoid rolling the numbers six and 14. So, five. Wow, that is so close as well, but she's fine, she's fine, thank goodness. Now, while Isabel is finishing up this uh, rabbit pie, what I wanted to bring up is that at this point, okay, we've got to go to Sophia's because she's in labor, so I'll see you when we get there. Okay, so we've called Oshara over. Hopefully she, you know, gets here quickly. Where are you going? Oh, she's going to have the baby. Okay, so luckily Oshara is here. Um, so we'll just have to say that she's close enough because Sophia is doing this thing with or without us. You know what I mean? She's like marching over here already. Okay, Sophia, it's all you, my friend. Your very first baby. Good luck, good luck, good luck, Sophia. Good luck. We're rooting for you. Oh my gosh, please, 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 please be okay. Please, please, please. Oh. 
how you look so much like your mom. A boy baby! Oh wow, that's crazy. Okay, a boy baby. Um, let's look for a name for a little baby boy. Maybe we'll go with the name Sten. That means stone. I think it's a pretty cool name. Oh, congrats, Sophia. You've had your very first baby. A baby of your own. Okay, so for Sophia to survive, she just has to avoid rolling the numbers 1 and 11. So let's see how this goes. First one doesn't count, so no 1, no 11. <sighs> Sophia's fine. And the baby Sten cannot roll the numbers 1, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 17, or 20. Oh, okay. Maybe yesterday was the worst of it. Maybe yesterday was the worst of it. Maybe everything's gonna be fine. Yeah, maybe everything's gonna be fine. And Sophia has 11 baby tries, you know? It's not like she's got a low number of baby tries. Like, the Lithuanian families might be in trouble, but she's got possibilities here. Now, what I was gonna say about Isabel before we got pulled over here for Sophia's birth, is that Isabel, it's been four years at this point since she last had a baby. And she, at this point, I think, is aware of the fact that they've got, she might have, or Darius might have some fertility issues. And so I think that at this point, she does really want to have a child still. And so she and Oshara actually have got a plan tonight to go and essentially go and see about somebody who they think might be able to help. Because at this point, Oshara knows that her father just died and he had the same symptoms as what her husband has now. She's also just lost their two babies that they had. And I think Oshara wants to get some healing help for her husband or maybe for potential babies. And so she and Isabel together are going to go see this person that they've heard has the ability to fix problems like this, fix problems that both of them are facing. And so tonight they're going to go together while Lena looks after Oshara's baby. And while Darius is of course looking after the children that Isabel and he took in. So that's kind of the plan and we'll have to see if something works out from that and if they can get the help that they're looking for or if not. But for now, we have another household we have to get to where there's another triple birthday. It's the same household that always has triple birthdays. It's happened like three times now and it is the Brewers. So I will see you when we get to the Brewer household for the triple birthdays. Wish us some good luck, guys. Okay, everyone inside. Alexander, we need you here. Annie, I'm just gonna teleport you here. And who's the other baby? Oh, it's not, it's Aiken the second. I forgot, because Elizabeth is older than he is. So, oh my gosh, they're all sad because Vilkas died. I mean, some of these guys never even met Vilkas, but they're still sad about it. Aiken, can you please help Annie, because she's the cutest, to age up first. And happy birthday, Annie! Oh, cute! And then up next for birthdays, it's going to be Alexander, because it's also his birthday. Yes, Annie! Kleptomaniac. Dang, girl. I feel like somebody else in your household is a kleptomaniac. What's your aspiration going to be? First one doesn't count, so of course it will be number one. A creative kleptomaniac. That's smart, you know? Then you can come up with creative heist plans. And then next, Alexander. It's you, my dude. Our little guy. With your sister cheering you in the background. Cute. <gasps> Alexander's neat and generous. Oh my gosh, what a nice guy. What's your aspiration going to be, bud? First one doesn't count, so it will be number one. One? Animal? Somebody else's. Isn't it your dad's? Yes. Wow, like father, like son, I guess. 
And then everybody gather round, because old sad Aiken the Second is becoming an adult. <laughs> oh, dang. Happy birthday, dude. You know, you were the only survivor of your generation from your family, and look at you now, you've got a pretty full household. And you've still got four more baby tries if we need them, so... We, And now he's an adult just like his wife Elizabeth. Wow. And he looks super jazzed about it. Nice. Okay. We'll put these guys in cast and see are they going to make it or not. For Annie to survive, she cannot roll the numbers 3, 9, or 19. First one doesn't count, so... Oh my gosh, that's so close. Okay. For Alexander to survive his teenage age up, the only number he cannot roll is the number 7. And he's fine. And for his marriage, will he get married? He will. And how many babies will he have? Three baby tries. Okie dokie. And for Aiken the second to survive, he cannot roll the numbers 3, 6, 11, 13, or 18. First one doesn't count, so it will be number... <gasps> oh my god. Oh. Oh yeah, but we roll a d12 to see how many more years he has before it happens, you won't see. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the audio recording here because I can hear the construction starting upstairs. So I'm going to pull this to a close here, but I hope that you've enjoyed this part. Thank you everyone for watching. As always, leave your comments in the feedback section below, and I will see you in the year 1335. Bye-bye, everyone.